Hi there Jeep owners, today in your 2020 Jeep Gladiator, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Yakima's Overhaul HD Ladder Rack. This is an adjustable height ladder rack with a 60 inch crossbar that offers a 500 pound carrying capacity. And this is a Jeep here, so we're not always going to be on the road with this vehicle. If you're doing off-roading, it does lower the capacity down to 300 pounds due to the extra vibrations. And you can see here, this is where the adjustment is. This arm here will slide in and out of the leg to get the appropriate height that you want to set it at. There's four screws that hold it in place to lock it down. You can see it's nice and solid, easily able to support that weight. The minimum height is 19 inches with a maximum of 30 inches. Then this is a premium ladder rack that's going to offer you all the features that your standard ladder racks would, but it has a plethora of additional features and the way it looks is just something to be seen. The, the finish on it's fantastic, the texture on it, and it just looks really rugged and beefy. So if you're going for something that's more of looks than it is for functionality, this one delivers in both departments. And this is gonna be great not just for putting wood and PVC pipe and other things you'd use a traditional ladder rack for, but it's also great for accessories because of the T-slots located in top of the rails. There is a rubber strip that's pre-installed in there. You can pull this up, install your accessory, cut the strip, and then reinstall it. That'll help keep dirt, debris, and moisture out of the track, as well as reduce any wind noise as it goes across the top of the rail. It just pushes right back in place once you set it in. This will accommodate most of your standard roof rack accessories. The only thing you need to keep in mind is the crossbar spread. The minimum for this ladder rack is gonna be 36 inches. There's also tie downs located on the end of each of our crossbars. And those are really cool if you have a kayak or a small John boat or something that's light enough to fit on top of these rails. You could easily run a strap across the top to clamp it to the top of the rails. There's also additional tie downs located on the arms here. So you've got plenty of attachment points all over this rack to keep your load secure. And to give you an idea of some accessories that can trick out your new ladder rack, on top we've got Yakima's Mega Warrior, which gives us a massive cargo basket to increase our capacity. And we also put on Yakima's sidebars. These are available in either a short bed or long bed option. We're using the short bed for our Gladiator here. We'll begin our installation by organizing our parts I've set them out at roughly the location where we're going to be installing them on the rails. You want to make sure that the rear rails here will sit with the arm towards the rear of the vehicle. You can see it's got the angle going towards the front. And then the front rails will be just the opposite with this arm towards the front and the angle towards the back. We also want the top to be pointing in towards the center. The feet are going to be identical between all of them, so you just want to add one of those to each one. And then you're also going to get two clamps for each of your legs. We'll now go to our crossbars. The end caps that are installed on there, we're gonna remove those so we can slide the insert here. These are threaded inserts. There is gonna be a single bolt that you'll have to remove. You will get tools included with your kit. So we're just gonna use the included tools to remove the bolts. And once you get that loose, sometimes it's easier to just flip it over, get that screw out of there. Our end cap then slides off. We can take our T-slots here. Our, we can take our bracket, slide it in place. We'll then reinstall our end cap, making sure that the T-slot is facing towards the top. You'll know you have the top if you see the strip located here. If you see the numbers on bottom, that's the bottom side. So we'll slide it back in, reinstall the bolt we had removed, and then we'll repeat this procedure for the three remaining locations. The one on the other side of this bar, plus the other bar on each side. Now we can get ready to install our base pads. Now I did mention before when we were laying these out, just put one next to them, because they're all basically the same. They are slightly different, so we are gonna show you how to get the one in the correct location. So first we're gonna look at the slots here. You'll see that you have a long slot and a short slot. For the front set here, we're gonna put the long slot towards the front of our Jeep. The other thing we wanna look at is the attachment here. There's gonna either be a bolt, which like you see here on this one, it's just, a, just an Allen key head bolt. That's a non-locking pad. And then if you have the one that kind of sticks out like this, that's for the lock to attach to. So this is a locking pad. We're gonna have the front driver side one be a locking one, and then the rear passenger one is also going to be a locking one. This will set in place on top of your bed rails. It's a good idea to clean your bed rails first. We've already got ours cleaned off here. We're gonna, we'll notice here that on this particular 
vehicle. It does have some extrusions that shoot out right here. So we are not gonna go beyond those points. We want it to sit flush against the rail. So we don't want it cocked like that. We want it to be nice and flush. So probably at about this point, we don't want to be on any curves. We can then take the spacers that come in our kit and the long, larger Allen head kit bolts. They're gonna drop down through the slot. And then the hooks that come included with your kit are going to go underneath the bed rail and your bolt is gonna thread right into it. We'll just loosely get that one started for now and then we're gonna do the same thing with the rear hole. You also get a large Allen key in your kit that is the one that's designed for these larger bolts here. I like to just start them by hand and then I'll switch over to the tool afterwards. For starters, we're just gonna snug it up until they just about touch the bottom there. That way it's not gonna be able to just fall off of there. So now that we've got them run up, we just wanna check for any obstructions here on the bottom, see if we have any in the way. And as long as there's no obstructions, we wanna put our clamps with as far a spread apart as you can, as long as you're not going to interfere with anything under those rails there. So now that we've got that position, we're gonna go ahead and snug these down. And then we'll torque these to the specifications found in our instructions. We can now get our arm set in place. We're gonna loosen up the bolt located on the side there. It uses the smaller Allen tool that comes included with it for the locking one here if you can't loosen it by hand, but mine came loose enough to where I could just do it by hand. We'll then grab our arm. We're gonna set that into place and then tighten down our bolt once again. Just get to where it's snug. Next, we're gonna to wanna to measure the height that we wanna set our arms to. We're gonna put ours to where they're high enough to where if we had anything that was sitting on our ladder rack, that it could go over the cab and we wouldn't have to worry about accidentally causing any damage to the roof. So we're gonna go ahead and figure out the distance here. And it looks like we're gonna put it 20, two inches, it looks like a pretty good number. There are four bolts that you'll need to loosen to adjust the height. There's two on each side and you're gonna use the larger of the handled Allen tools that come included in your kit. These are tamper proof. So if you look down in the center, you can see there's a hole drilled out in the middle and there's also a small tab in the center of each one that prevents people from coming along and making any adjustments. You do have to have the right tool. And if we look on here, we have numbers written on there so you can pick whatever height that you want. And we measured about 22. So that's where we're gonna go ahead and lock ours down. So we're just gonna retighten those four bolts that we had just loosened up after lifting it up to the height that we desire. Once we've got this tightened down, we can repeat the same procedure over on the other side. As far as getting the bottom plates mounted up, those are also going to be the same procedures. The only difference again is gonna be the orientation. The back set is gonna have this section here facing towards the front. And we're gonna have the locking pad here on the bottom, the mounting plate on the passenger side on the rear. Now that those are all in place, the brackets that we had inserted earlier, went ahead and slid those towards the center. And then we'll set our crossbar into place. Once you've got it set into place, 
we want to measure the distance and make sure it's the same on each side. So just adjust it until they are equal. The bar is pretty tight down in here, so you might want to lift it back out of there when making your adjustments side to side to get it even, and then pop it back down in there and then just recheck yourself because it just is really stiff, so it can be hard to, uh, to move it once you get it in there. Now we'll take the shorter Allen head bolt that comes in our kit. We're going to place a lock washer on it, followed by a flat washer. And the plate that we have here, we're going to slide it over until it lines up with the hole in the bottom of our leg. With this one here, I do find it easier if you kind of, uh, you got to almost like squeeze and pull the arm up or else the bolt's not going to be long enough to actually reach the bracket. So make sure you do get that as close together as you possibly can. Slide your bracket into place. And then just run your bolt up and get it started. Then we'll put our other bolt in, get it started as well. I like to leave these loose so I can double check my crossbar spread and make sure it's the same on each side. Once you've verified that it's the same, you can go ahead and tighten it down. Now that we've got everything fully installed, I went and double checked all my measurements to make sure everything's nice and even and also double check to make sure everything was properly tightened and torqued. Once all that's done, we can go ahead and install our locks to protect our investment. We'll just take our lock and slide it over the lock tab on each of the legs, making sure it's fully inserted. And then we can go ahead and lock it. And you can see it's gonna hold it on there. We'll repeat for the other leg. And that completes our installation of Yakima's Overhaul HD Ladder Rack on our 2020 Jeep Gladiator.